Hi, I'm Foto Shusek. I'm an independent curator and writer. And today we are at Daiho Anglo Japanese Foundation in London on the occasion of Yukako Toneka's first solo exhibition in the UK titled Fluctuating Fluctuations Now, Then, Here, Elsewhere. The title is evocative of, of many questions and as well as the exhibition that you see here that we will be going through today. And one thing that is very important is to mark Yukako Toneka's prolific practice that she's informed from disciplines that is out other than visual arts, such as philosophy, neuroscience, or chemistry, or astrophysics. And these are only a few to name. So unlike the other exhibitions, Yukako Tanaka uses the two exhibition rooms in the foundation, as well as the reception, the living room, and the library. She expands into the texture and the architecture of the foundation as well as the history that we've all come to it. And if we were to kind of like give you a chronological lineup of the artistic progress that Yukoko Tanaka has been following all over the last four or five years, uh, the first work that comes to mind is uh, Close Encounters of the Existence. It is from 2019 and it is a holographic installation. The title of the work alludes to Steven Spielberg's uh, famous film, Close Encounters with the Third Kind. And the third kind here is actually, for Yikwaka Tanaka, is the cosmic rays and the continuous showers of cosmic rays that happen uh, on a regular basis onto the surface of the Earth that also takes humans and any animate and inanimate beings under its influence. So for the work, what we see is a hologram uh, of a hand, and this is actually artist's own hand that is put under the reception of cosmic rays. And, and in a way that is controlled uh, measure of our hand receiving cosmic rays within a given period of time. So the holographic installation is also, you know, like trying to kind of evoke the sense of four dimensionality because that is something that we talk about when we are thinking about the universe at large. The three-dimensionality is very specific to the Earth and living on the Earth. So it's about, about like expansion into understanding other realities, but also perhaps speculating about the fact that we are living in a projected reality. In the same room, there's two other works installed. They both have the same title, Memory of Ghosts. And one of the significant qualities of uh, Yukako Tanaka's artistic practice is inquiry into the scientific material, but also at the same time, her association with the personal and the humane levels of uh, understanding and engaging with reality. So in a way, it could be thought through as like allegories, like there are allegories that are addressed or assigned to scientific phenomena such as cosmic rays or gravitational uh, waves. For instance, for the memory of ghosts, one of her starting points was a dead star and thinking about the notion of memory and the star that has already kind of lost its livelihood and if that memory could be accessed and what would that be you know how would we actually channel that memory and uh, i believe gravitational wave or measuring gravitational wave and the patterns or the way it encounters with the surface of the earth is one way of like engaging with the memory of a long gone star on the installation that that's placed low onto the floor is where uh, you see the impact and the patterns that the gravitational waves produce when measured and that measuring and the specificity of this work takes place through the aid of gin because gin has a better density than water to kind of evoke those patterns and to kind of like uh, visualize those patterns into an understandable or a kind of accessible form. The other work with the same title, Memory of Ghosts, is a three-channel installation that has been done specifically for the Daiba Angus uh, Japanese Foundation. 
She wanted to kind of transform the work into a site responsive work. Uh, what we been, mean by site responsive is that this was performed at uh, in earlier iterations at different locations, but then when it was made into a film installation, it has a different editing quality than a straightforward documentation. And the script, of course, is, you know, like very much reminiscent of the question of gravitational wave. Very uh, seemingly different scales of reality is rendered into a three-channel film where these concepts of intimacy or this notion of memory, you know, like being part of a human reality, human body, or a body that is existent doesn't necessarily need to have a level of consciousness, let's say, that we think humans have. So this inquiry into, let's say, abstracted love encounters or intimate encounters becomes more personal and private in the other room. And the piece, recalling the future, um, is actually a video installation with an interactive uh, uh, installation component. Uh, let's first talk about the video installation. The video, uh, recalling the future, specifically um, focuses on dementia and uh, kind of like this memory loss, but also at the same time focuses on memory as data. Yukako Tanaka um, decides to or chooses to speculate on the nature of human memory and if that could also be recorded as data, as it is recorded in our brain and in our body, in our muscle memory, uh, if that could also be something that can be transported. So if you go to the film, Recalling the Future, looks at a person who has dementia, that was actually floating between realities of the past and the future while still existing in a way you know, like some people might think about that existence as a mere existence, as an existence that is very basic and that kind of like only uh, in a way addresses or meets the basic needs of, of humans, such as like shelter, food and, and affection. So in the piece of recalling the future, memory is depicted as something effervescent like soap, but also at the same time something very much kind of like pierced into our character, into our existence. And um, either you hear or you experience that from the telling of uh, Yukoko Tanaka's grandmother or from the uh, archival footage that the artist shares. One thing that is very interesting is that the twist here is the person that is in the film is Yukoko Tanaka's uh, own grandmother. So that kind of like a private trajectory of, of personal histories mapped with, let's say, speculative scientific histories of humankind is quite curious. There's a kind of a timeline that is produced next to the screens of the interactive installation and the timeline dates back to Big Bang or the Homo sapiens being introduced to the surface of the earth and also about industrial revolution or Albert Einstein's uh, relativity theory and the paper and how it actually changed the way we understand and conceptualize reality reality of what is here and now and reality of what can happen here or elsewhere and i think that also you know like is something that resonates with the title of the exhibition uh, in a way what the artist is you know asking us to question these um, frameworks or these references of how we form our knowledge of the world and interpretation of the world one other thing that is very interesting and important is that, you know, there is also this kind of, let's say, scientific objectivity uh, in approaching a very personal history uh, in the sense in which the interactive installation is composed of layers of MRI scans of Yukoko Tanaka's grandmother. And the interactive part is that the audience can put their hand on and while moving their hand uh, horizontally on the cursor, they can go into different phases of her brain. 
and the brain scans. So somehow there is that kind of like tangibility and material, materiality because there's an image. An image has reality that we kind of like relate to and that has that immediacy. So alongside that immediacy, there's that audience that actually becomes part of the work with their body and with their kind of willpower in a way and intention of like engaging with the depths of somebody else's memory. And what does that memory bring? It brings like childhood songs that has never been forgotten, even though that were they, they were sang at the age of four, or it could be conversations that are appearing from past or from the present. And this form of effervescence and elusiveness of understanding memory is quite interesting because that also really urges us to understand what is human. And what does it mean to be present in the present? And what is consciousness? And what is it that we really perceive, you know, in the world? Is it about, um, you know, our brain actually receives all these signals and interprets them as pain, pleasure, as something good, something bad. But also at the same time, could those signals be data that are transported and for us then to be relived even if our you know like physical faculties fail us and i think you know yukako tanaka takes that further a step and uh, she explores her uh, utopic idea of a brain data memory center and and she actually speculates that perhaps even though we might not move to mars but we could mi migrate these data uh, maybe for ourselves or maybe for other generations to come to be accessed and to, to kind of used and utilized. I think uh, it has a very interesting tone in the sense that, you know, the works are not didactic at all. It does uh, kind of like tell or foretell these, let's say, scientific, speculative or evidence-backed, factual data or entry or input with uh, something that is personal uh, and something that is subjective and something that is narrational. But uh, while doing so, uh, Yuka Kotanaka uses the language of visual arts. She doesn't use the language of science nor uh, language of, um, you know, like philosophy. What I find very interesting uh, over, the, over the whole exhibition is about the artist wanting to position herself. Sometimes she is directly present, such as her hand is receiving those cosmic rays while, you know, like she is measuring the amount in a given time, or her grandmother coming in with, coming in with her narrative or her speculative allegorical uh, scripts and uh, texts that kind of like come together into the work. And I think the kind of like culmination of these different approaches is in her latest piece, Being in Absence. And for that, the building of Daiwa Anglo-Japanese Foundation gave the inspiration because this uh, building housed uh, the Liberty couple a hundred years ago or more than a hundred years ago. And she was very much interested in the lived experience of spaces, architectural sites, dwellings, you know, private homes. And, and I think like her inquiry was because sound is also something that is very effervescent and that is yes, yet invisible to the eye, but it has an omnipresence when experienced. I think her inquiry was about finding out if the sounds of former lives still resonated in the walls and in the kind of creases or crevices of the building. So being in absence is actually a sound piece that is uh, transported through a portal and those portals and different conversations in different rooms are channeled through those portals. So in the living room, you might actually experience almost like someone whispering through your ear, experience these sounds that are coming from the past. And the fact that Yukako Tanaka chose to kind of really expand into the building is very interesting in the sense that it kind of like brings the here and nowness to the exhibition while the works speculate about 
you know, like reiterative pasts or recollectable futures. And her juxtaposition of could there be a future memory that is recorded or could that be a memory of the past that can be transformed in the data is only kind of, let's say, um, a blanket in the exhibition. And, and in a way, it almost like denotes the multi-layeredness of, of her uh, artistic inquiry. And while having conversations with her, one thing that really resonated with me is that her approach to art as a vessel where these other disciplines, other form, formations of knowledge production can uh, come together in the art where it can be interpreted and, and, um, and perhaps brought together in a way that has not been done before because the approaches are either too methodolo methodological or methodical or the um, kind of like interpretations are too personal and too subjective. The exhibition requires its audiences to be active and, and also to kind of really spend time and be here to experience the works. But also at the same time, it has a very contemplative nature in a way in which these larger than life questions of, you know, like different scales of information, knowledge production and understanding of our immediate surrounding comes to the fore. I believe Yuko Tanaka's interest in these kind of like um, in the amalgamation of, of various approaches and as well as juxtaposition of, you know, like macro and micro scales of experience that let it be human experience or let it be experience as such uh, is brought into a wider interrogation.